All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you are just tuning in with us, uh, thank you and welcome to the Find Me Off of League of Legends Championship Series. This is uh, week two, game one, GDA versus Pooh, super hype match. My name is Joystick. With me, we have... Menbung. And... DG Mad Hatter. DG Mad Hatter, nice to, to be with you guys tonight. We have a really awesome game. We're looking forward to it to all of our viewers once again. Thank you for joining us. We are ready to get into picks and bans here. We are going to go right into it, folks. We are not wasting any time today. So we're going to go right into it. I hope you guys are ready for a really hyped up match. We've got coming up real soon, picks and bans. So this is a hype match, guys. We got Pooh versus GDA. The featured matchup of the week, in my opinion here, we have Labyrinth 1898 versus Theatrix in the jungle. These are two of my uh, brothers from my chapter, uh, Pi Mew chapter over in Tampa, Florida. So really interesting story behind these two. We've got Labyrinth 1898 been playing since season one, was the one that actually taught Theatrix. That's right. Labyrinth was the one that taught the famous Adam Hall how to jungle, guys. So we've got a really exciting match today. What do you guys think? Well, it just seems like a little bit of Senpai versus Pupil right here, Grasshopper. It's going to be pretty interesting. As a jungler myself, I'm really, really interested into how this is going to turn out. Um, Pooh, in their first week against uh, Rich is Provoked, my team looked really, really good. Bear Jr. leading the way and Labyrinth disrespecting the enemy team by not even finishing his jungle item. Oh, yeah. If I recall correctly. Uh, but then you have uh, GDA on the other side with... Uh, Baja Blast Lover looking really good, and uh, Adam just doing the theatric things. I think what I'm most excited to see for in this matchup is looking at both teams here, seeing where uh, the advantages are. I think uh, side of Bear Jr.'s team, I think that the bot lane is a stronger matchup than the other bot lane. I think that uh, no. it's even in the mid lane. And on theatric side, I think theatrics has uh, something game. happened. Yeah. Uh, sorry, are we, are we trying to start right now? Because I can't see chat. Yeah, uh, it seems like that's been happening for both of these custom games. Everyone can't like see chat, so just so pick fans starting right now. Y'all are y'all okay. Jump back, right. Nick. Okay. All right, so we had a little technical difficulty, but, you know, it's not really anything on our end. Unfortunately, uh, Riot has some spaghetti code that they're still trying to work through, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to – that's why we use the pro draft tool uh, for these drafts, just so that we can make sure everything goes smoothly. So, uh, as you guys were saying, we are talking about this jungle matchup and uh, some of the disrespect we saw from from Labyrinth in the last game. I, I think we've got Poo is 2-0 and o from their week one game, and uh, GDA is actually – uh, one and one so they've got something to prove yeah technically in the standings we because we do game score it's going to be a one in one zero zero and a zero one zero i believe or zero zero one because they classify it as a tie right uh but yeah in match score it's one and one and two and zero uh pick and bands already done we're already through the first phase wow so we've got the cane band it looks like targeted at adam probably Definitely a big one. Uh, the Blitzcrank ban probably targeted at uh, Bear Jr. Uh, they let that slip twice in a row last week, uh, uh, RIP did, and uh, Bear Jr. just went absolutely ham on them with that with that Blitzcrank. And yep, actually another one targeted at him too with the hooks, Thresh. Yeah, first-hand experience, and I said at the end of the cast, please ban this Blitzcrank. Uh, the Malzahar ban and Ezreal right now, uh, also banning Anivia's, uh, Hero Mars Anivia, mind you. Uh, Malzahar, just a really strong pick, and here I'm more really, really comfortable on that Anivia with the first pick, Viegar coming out. Oh, yeah, there we go. And uh, that could be a support Morgana. I mean, we don't see mid Morgana pretty much at all anymore, but you never know. That could be a flex pick for them. Yeah, I think it kind of fits Bear Jr.'s pool a little bit better of pick. Uh, trying, He's really good at skill shots and holding them to where he makes the enemy team... Have to play a little bit more safe, you know. I think that Morgana is actually going over to GDA, though. Oh, wrong side. Right. <laughs> I have I have it flipped. Well, there you go. Uh. So clap a five five and Siver for Europe Moose. Interesting bot lane double spell shield though, so not gonna be able to land much CC if they time it correctly. Oops. 
sorry for the hurricane, folks. A uh, little microphone malfunction. <laughs> <sighs> uh, and the Yorick coming up for Hillary Clinton. Uh, makes sense. We've been seeing a lot of Yorick, and that's going to be a York. jungle Malachi, unless it's support Malachi uh, for bear, which, I mean, it's bear. It could possibly be anything. It could be a support Viagar. I think that's definitely wow. going to be the, the jungle Malachi on Labyrinth. Uh, that's one yeah. of his main champions right now, the, the Malachi. So that's a pretty standard one. We, we he was uh, he was threatening uh, that he was gonna pull some interesting stuff, and I'm not gonna spoil it just in case we see it in game two. But he's gonna go with a standard pick for him, which is gonna be that Maokai. And I think we're gonna have the Shen top now uh, on GDA. So we're going into our second phase of bans here. Yeah. Um. So far, you can see that one. This they're matching the split push from Yorick with the global pressure of the Shen. Uh. No matter what lane they draft in the bot lane now, the Sivir Morgana will have the push. Uh, so they have they have one at least one winning pushing lane. Yorick Shen can be tilted uh, in either favor. Uh, it's just going to be really really hard. Viegar with the control control in the mid lane, but not much wave clear on the side of Pooh. Yeah. So they're going to try to target a uh, ban here, a uh, random guy who is definitely a Tristana main right now. So they're banning out his main right now. Yeah, I think it's kind of interesting to have. Uh, I don't think the Maokai was maybe a priority pick for someone like Garfield Juice or Adam especially. Uh, so maybe picking the Tristana up on the last part would have been better to give your... Elise. Little... Yeah. I like the Sona band coming here. Sona is very, very strong still. Um, Uh-oh. I just got lobby. kicked from the lobby. I also was Maybe that's a, is that a riot? Anti-AFK. As Picks and, and Bans are continuing. Picks and Bans are continuing, yes. We did, we, we were just kicked from the lobby, so we're going to get that remade. But Bans are still coming out. So we got a bunch of jungle Bans coming out. I mean, uh, Adam is definitely a big threat. I think they're a little worried about him going off in the jungle, so they're going to try to ban him out. I mean, there's still the Graves, and there's still the Rengar, if he really wants to go for like these AD kind of carry ones. Um there's some other ones right now. Karma coming in for the mid lane uh, for Baja Blast Lover. Most likely, uh, I kind of prefer it in the mid lane. It's a better source of wave clear, in my, in my opinion, and easier gank assistance for a mid lane gank. Um, it's going to be uh, interesting to see what happens here, though, on the side of food to round out their comp. Changes in the new and preseason. Uh, Karma... Mid lane. Get that pick out. Get so yeah. strong again. Get the misfortune coming out now. Now this is huge. Uh, I think misfortune is one of the strongest ADCs right now. Uh, we talked about this in the last cast right before this one. I'm on my double cast right now. Uh, but the double tap into a spe sliver spell shield could uh, be negated, uh, while Morgana just is going to have to eat it. So. Or Karma, but most likely Morgana, depending on where they flex that. I'm expecting some type of carry for one, maybe the Rengar in this one, but it's so much tank on the other side, you can only really burst out the Soraka or maybe Viegar if the event horizon's down. The Jarvan coming out for Adam Hall. Now, so here's something interesting. We saw the Elise ban come out for... For Adam, and you know, most people who know Adam might be a little confused because we don't see him on that Elise too often. Uh, but there's a little bit of a story here. Uh, I think Adam has been playing on some of his alternate accounts this week, trying to hide because Adam and uh, Labyrinth, uh, uh, excuse me, I keep calling them by their names, but we'll go by their summoner names. Theatrics and Labyrinth spend a lot of time playing together. So in order to sort of hide what they've been practicing, I think Adam has been playing on some of his alternate accounts trying to disguise his practice. But with some uh, investigating, I think we might have he might have been foiled a little bit. But he did still get the Jarvan, which I know he's been pretty much spamming all week, which is a, an interesting choice from them. Yeah, I I mean, I'm, a, I'm someone who typically will get Jarvan banned away from me as well uh, in the jungle. Jarvan's just a good straightforward champ it fits any any te team's need also it gives them a way into the team that they were really needing 
You can have the Jarvan die bot laner, jump onto them, get ulted by the Shin, have Sivir, Boomerang Blade with a Karma Mantra Q on top of them into the Cataclysm. There's a lot of AoE damage and teamfight presence here on the side. Just, just re-log real quick, because I think the client bugged. All right. Yeah, I'm re-logging back in here. Sorry, uh, of course, Rito Spaghetti Code strikes again, folks. Yep, Rito's I Italian. I put my password in on stream. Oh, it's star, 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 just like mine, dude. <laughs> No, 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 we got some elite hackers out here, so. Oh, yeah, you're right. DOS Byte is the most. Eric's been creeping on Adam's alternate profile all week. Code or nation with the inside information. Um, yeah, so, I, you know, so we've had some investigation going on, some some sneaky. So I, I'm, I'd be interested to talk to these guys after this game, maybe if we can get them in the interview, depending on how well they play, uh, about what their, their strategies were going into this week because because clearly they they were both taking this very seriously uh, and, it, and it's and it's less that uh you know there it's a rivalry thing for them you know the student and the master we'll see how it goes and as we know adam is a diamond player but rank doesn't always mean everything especially in these five versus five you know organized situations all right i'm gonna try to make the lobby i'm making i'm making oh, I'm, I'm, everyone's good. joining in we're doing it good. we're doing it no, Garfield, join me. Everyone join me. It is. Stop the. Oh, get out of here. Oh, gosh. So many people in spectate. All right, I'm joining over the spectate here. Perfect. So as we get this lobby organized, uh, why don't you guys go ahead and talk some more about these team comps? What do we think uh, we should... Uh, we should get some hashtags in, in chat here and see which one of these uh, teams we think is going to win. But I think you guys should definitely talk about these team comp strengths and weaknesses and about um, what we think going into this match. Yeah, so uh, definitely for me, I think I, I kind of already touched about it on GDA, how they have more AO team comp and they have a little bit better initiation, whether it's a Sivir ult. They could catch somebody out with a Morgana Q and also just Jarvan doing Jarvan things. When it comes to the side of Poo, they have a lot of zone control. And that's going to be, whether it's the Baby Cage Event Horizon from Viagar, the Malachi Ultimate, the Yorick Mini Baby Cage, uh, Misfortune Ultimate, and like, you know, the Make It Rain uh, coming down as well. And then Soraka gives some zone control as well. It's also incredibly more tanky on the side of Pooh. Uh, so... What I'm thinking, too, is that I think that in the mid to late game, uh, I think that GDA uh, could have a strong advantage just with how good Tiver is. The only thing is, though, is that if they don't get picks early, I think it could be rough for them uh, because I think that this team comp is forgiving. If they're not Real quick, I'm going to have to stop you, Clank. Shots. Uh, at least on my mic, my microphone end or my headset, you are fading out at the end of all your sentences. It just sounds like you're going into a tunnel. How about now? Are we sounding a little better? Yes, incredibly. And no hurricane. No. No hurricane. Okay. Um, it looks like we just so have one more person that we can be able to get random guy in here. So what I was saying is I think that on GDA side, if they end up not executing their skill shots well, I think it's, it will be very unforgiving for them in fights, uh, especially early. Uh, and I wonder if uh, Pooh can take advantage of that. Well, I think, so here's the thing, like, while the, I think the simple team, both team comps are somewhat simple with maybe a little bit more simpler being on GDA side outside of the use of knowing when to use Shen Teleport and how to use it proactively instead of reactively. Um, if you, you... They have nobody who can really take out the Soraka if it gets to mid, late, to late game. If you can't kill her or Misfortune, like pop either one of them right away, the War of Attrition will go to the side of Pooh. Malachi is going to get tanky. Yorick will be extremely split pushy. And then again... Zone control, going into fog of war, which we'll toggle vision on and off during this game, will be extremely hard 
for the GDA team, uh, which has three incredibly squishy champions uh, going into a bullet time or an event horizon, and Vieger can just solo out almost anybody uh, with his ultimate and just pop them. I'm gonna gonna interrupt you guys real quick. It looks like we finally are able to get back into the lobby using the uh, the good old fashioned switcheroo with the spectator mode and the team switching that you got to do to get in the right order here. We are about to start in just a moment. Uh, of course, we do have the three minute spectator delay, but uh, we'll have a, a chance more time to go over the uh, team comps as uh, we wait for that spectator delay. So go ahead, guys, take it away. Oh no, yeah. Um... So just going back to it, it's if it goes late, Pooh, in my opinion, will win. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Misfortune's stronger uh, of the two ADCs. Um, we also, uh, Frank mentioned it earlier, you know, he just thinks that the bottom lane of Pooh is stronger. I'm interested to see uh, Bear Jr. not on a playmaking support since he was kind of prioritized right there and just kind of put the Soraka there at the end. Um, but it's going to be up to Adam. <laughs> it's funny, we talked about the jungler so much, and it's going to be on Adam to make some plays in the early game. Get this Viegar behind when his event horizon's down. Get the Yorick behind going off of a Shin taunt, because that 2v2 will be in their favor in the early. Uh, the Maokai Yorick versus Shin Jarvan definitely will be in their favor. Um, you know, if I had to wait this game right now, I'd say it's 60-40 poo, just because I think PMA LCS generally, outside of the past two games we just saw, tends to go later. But these are some two of the best teams that we've seen in the past week. So, so I, I have a question for you guys uh, to answer. Maybe chat, maybe you guys could chime in. We see Bear Jr. right now rocking the Soraka. Now, typically he's on champions like we see, like Blitzcrank, like Thresh. Of course, those are banned out this game. So he's on the Soraka, not necessarily known for being a playmaking champion. Do we think that is going to affect Pooh's performance in this match, the fact that the Soraka can't get those picks that they were relying on so heavily in their Week 1 games? Frank? I think that it's all dependent on... Which which this game which way this game starts swinging, uh, because he's going to be have to be dependent on the random guy you know and Vigar uh, to be pumping out damage, and I think that if we can start to see a little bit of a lead um, from Pooh, I think the Soraka pick is going to be incredible. But if they get behind, I think it's really going to harm them. Yeah, so here's my thing. I don't think it'll necessarily hurt. It'll just, it'll really show a lot about the team's communication and their reliance on Nick Bear Jr. Um, if they can't make something happen, but they have a team comp, like I said, that has a lot of zone control. So instead of having like a Thresh or a Blitzcrank that has a, uh, you know, pick potential to where everyone else can follow up on that. He's giving the <laughs> Teemo hover. Uh, <laughs> nice. Uh, the uh, He's giving the rest of his team the ability to make one plays themselves. Uh, 40 viewers, Greg. Uh, you joined. And then um, making plays themselves. And then it's kind of forgivable as well because Maokai Ultimate... Um, and then the Viegar event horizon and stuff can kind of zone off if some of those plays didn't work out for them. So, do do want to cut do want to cut you off here? Um, if you look at loading screen right now, it doesn't look like we'll be seeing the Morgana in the bot lane. I'm gonna wait until the last second because I do not think. I think this is a mistake on the side of um, GDA. I don't if think they... so. I think I think we see. I've seen. You know, uh, we're looking at the history. Obviously, doing some research before this map. I think Clap is definitely uh, a Karma player. So seeing him on that Karma, that's one of his main champions that he's been practicing this week. So I'm. I think it's likely that we'll see that Karma, and that Morgana is looks like it's here to stay. Well, I I think my main reason for that would be I would 
one, I like Karma mid into the Viegar a little bit better for the gank assistance that it, it applies. Now, you can do the same thing in the bot lane against the mobile Soraka. Uh, so it's a little bit, it just, to me, it indicates where GDA's focus is going to be more so. They're going to give Morgana a free farm lane just to push and maybe roam. Um, and that's, and and that's super easy for the Morgana with the Black Shield just to be able to walk <clears throat> out of that baby cage. Exactly. That's, I think, the thing that they're maybe looking at. And also, the easier engage on the bot lane to probably kill Bear Jr. Soraka. Uh, so. Or they, they could take it in a completely different direction and use it to bulldoze over the Vigar. Because if the Vigar, if, say, they're going to gank, uh, gank mid lane onto the Vigar, they could either spell shield uh, J4 to jump on the Vigar or spell shield herself to sprint right at Vigar. Yeah, um, I mean, and also you can't miss a Morgana R, so luckily. Uh, you want to do yeah, some roster rundown? I, I, the more that we talk about this Morgana, yeah, yeah, well, yes, I wanted Sorry. to make one quick yeah, yeah. point, though, about yeah, yeah. this Morgana. I think that is excellent. This Morgana could really be a huge counterpick to their team. That Black Shield can be used in a lot of different ways. They don't have a whole lot of CC uh, on the side of... Uh, Poo. I mean, yes, the Maokai is the single target with the, with the ult. That's. I think I think the the black shield is going to come in handy definitely when we're talking about these Jarvan ganks, talking about trying to avoid uh, the Vigar event horizon, as Ali was uh, apt to point out to us. So, yeah, I, I'm really interested to see how that lane works out. But you're absolutely right. We're going to go over these lineups right now. So uh, on the side of Bear Junior poops in the woods, we have Yorick, uh, uh, Hillary Clinton playing Yorick in the top lane with flash and teleport. We have Labyrinth 1898 uh, on the Maokai in the jungle. Uh, Hiramar in the mid lane with the Vigar pick. And uh, that random guy you know, rocking the Misfortune in the bot lane, uh, accompanied by Bear Jr. with a Soraka. And on the side of GDA, we have Garfield Juice in the Shen. Theatrix debuting his Jarvan the Fourth play in the jungle. In the mid, we have Baja Blast Lover doing the Morgana. You're a moose in the bot lane as Siver and clap that A55. Five, five. <laughs> Rocking the <laughs> Karma in the bot lane as a support. Uh, this game is going to be started in just a few seconds, guys. Uh, for those of you 37 viewers, I think we peaked at 40 at one point. That's awesome, guys. Uh, let's get some hashtags in the chat here. Let's get a, a hashtag poo win or a hashtag GDA win. Let's see what you guys think. Yeah, I, th I think I'd have to give it the... There's a lot of ways that uh, GDA can make some plays happen. I think it's going to be, again, on the back of Adam and then the proactive use of this Shin teleport. Um, because in a lot of ways, Pooh can just sit back and farm, and if nothing happens for 25 minutes, they're going to be more than happy with that. I want to hear from the casting team. Give me your hashtag. Oh, mine's poop on me. Uh, that's tough. That's tough. Uh, I think for me, no, don't you crash on me, League of Legends. It's not crashing. It's just black. For me. <laughs> All right. All right. We're good. Uh, yeah, that's 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 a tough call for me. Uh, for this game, I might I might have to go hashtag GDA wins. Oh, and I'm also going to go with hashtag GDA. Okay, so we got. And, it's, and this is this is my opinion solely based on team comp alone, <laughs> and solely based on the draft. I I can't really make any judgment based on skill because these are two arguably two of the the top teams uh, in um, the PMA LCS right now. These this is a the featured matchup of the week. I think so. This it really could go either way. I think it just is going to depend on who wins the early game. So, um. Uh... Who's gonna be? Who's gonna have the better scoreline, KDA wise, Labyrinth or Theatrix? <laughs> um, I'm going with Labyrinth. You're going with Labyrinth. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm no, gonna no, I'm sorry, Labyrinth. Adam, because of it, Jarvan. It's Jarvan. Because of Jarvan. All right, we are in, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. We are just now getting into Week One, Game One of Pooh versus GDA. Let's get this underway. They are making their way down the lanes, setting up for the early game. Are we going to see an invade? Possibly. Let's find out. Yep. Week two, uh, game, whatever this yes. is. Yes, week two. By the way. 
Game one. Yes, yeah. you're right. Got so, so excited. Yeah, I'm definitely of the opinion so. that Bear Jr.'s team should not invade. There is a Morgana <laughs> and a Karma right there. Uh, just scouting out the Maokai. Meowakai, excuse me, kittens. Great little skin right there. I want to talk about keystones for a bit. So we have the Aftershock on Labyrinth, which is good. Electrocute on uh, Theatrix, also good. Three summon Ares, four summon Ares, excuse me. Uh, even after the nerf, she's still very strong. Uh, I want to talk about the Fleet of Foot. I'm not entirely sure what Sivir would run. I guess that's going to be it. Uh, but I think the most interesting difference is the grasp of the and dying in the top for Hillary Clinton and Garfield G's going with press the attack on Shen. See for me I feel like uh press the attack would be better on Sivir. Uh, just because once you get to a certain point in, in the game, uh hitting three attacks in a row is a difficult. Uh Sivir attack speed pretty awesome. Uh for me the biggest question is though is Baja Blast Lover I'm not liking the airy, uh, specifically because in a similar way that Anivia Q, uh, when you get the lockdown, um, Comet is really good. So if you would be able Adam to hit... Adam's looking bot lane. Sorry. Looks like, yeah, we got Jarvan coming in for an early gank. Oh no, we're getting stream lag. That's so bad. Theatrix coming in. Oh, that's the flash from the Soraka. He's going to go and tower dive at level 2 anyway. He's going to take two shots with the heal from the Sivir to get the first blood. Out onto the Karma, maybe not what they wanted, but they did go for the early tower dive, and they succeeded. Yep, and as we have a little bit of trade topside, which this to press the attack on the Shin actually will do a lot because of the taunt, and then he can block out the... Uh, totally just yeah. bullying him out. Yeah, Shin, Shin has a very oppressive laning phase, especially for early levels against Yorick. But going back to the first blood, uh, Jarvan level 2 gank, obviously, is something that everybody should expect at this point, playing League of Legends. Uh, didn't go on to the person that they wanted to. They had to expend four summoners to three. There's no summoners now on Bear Jr., which is nice, but here comes Labyrinth. Got a gank coming in Labyrinth, ganking, getting the W down, but not waiting for the taunt to come out. That's the flash from the Shen. Yeah, so, I, yeah. Maybe he should have held that uh, that root down until uh, Shen used the taunt, but uh, they still managed to get the flash, so that's worth it every time. Yeah, I think I think the reason why you root he, he wanted to root right away so he didn't get taunted, and then he gave him the way out. Uh, but Garfield Juice has this huge wave that's going to crash into Hillary Clinton. It's going to be interesting to see how much he's able to pick up underneath the turret. I haven't seen much from mid lane so far. This is going to be one of those things where people both look to just kind of try to farm out for that mid to late game. Yeah, but and we I think... do have a little bit of a conflict happening. Maokai jumping in on the Morgana. The Morgana uses a black shield to block the CC. Jarvan comes in for the counter gank on him with the red buff. They're going to slow up Labyrinth. He uses Flash to get out. Big trade in the mid. Huge, huge trade right there. And that's something that Frank talked about in the early game. This Morgana going mid as opposed to support makes it to where she's incredibly hard to gank if her black shield is not down. The timing of ganks is so important based on ability cooldowns. Um, and now that we're talking about mid lane, I think the reason why you go summon airy right there is just for like harass that is, damage. Yeah, that's landable because oh, Morgana lands a snare. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know why I got so excited. That's really all they were gonna do there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's scary. You never know. Yeah, it's true. I mean, uh, twelve years from now, Hiramar becomes unstunned from the Morgana snare. <laughs> yeah, twelve years from now, they some say he's still stunned. I'm uh, really impressed right now that Labyrinth is uh, keeping up as well uh, in farm with Theatrix. Um, despite, I think Theatrix is being more, is doing better in, uh, ganking his lanes. Uh, great counter gank, got the gank bot lane, uh, is just burning more and being a little more proactive. Um, well, I mean, what do we think? Is the, I mean, in my opinion, I think the Maokai inherently is a little bit of a slower farmer too than Jarvan, especially in the early games. Yeah, I actually was going to say the exact opposite, that I think it's actually more impressive that Theatrix was able to gank bottom lane and then still be ahead. Uh, in farm, uh, because he's he was bot lane, and then he had to recall right away, which could have given Malachi some time to get a little bit ahead. I do want to kind of question maybe the reason why Adam went machete.
first, but maybe, I mean, not he didn't go machete first. He went the uh, talisman, but he was playing the gank bot, so I guess he just didn't really care. Uh, but yeah, the summon airy definitely for the consistent damage, as opposed to having to land the bind and then get the comet on top. <laughs> Overall, it's been a relatively quiet last couple of months. To destroy to the teams. Yeah, I think this is what they would do when they hit level six. Typically, unless you're Karma. You know, I mean, we've level. got that Shen coming up on his level six. We got a gank coming in the top lane. Jarvan goes right in. He's only level four, though. He's not really going to want to take any tower shots. They're just trying to push out that Yorick, who does have a slight farm advantage. I mean, that's definitely something like you get that Yorick behind early game so that you can't become a huge menace. Well, and also, if you, if you look at where the wave is right now, he could... Well, Gar never mind. Garfield's not doing a freeze, but he could... Oh, we have a flash forward from the Organa. Flash Q... Stands in the middle of that <laughs> event horizon just contemplating what he did. <laughs> so I guess if he would have done it in reverse, it would have probably resulted in a kill. If he flash R's and then Q's, he probably gets both chunks of damage off. Uh, but Labyrinth invading on the blue side jungle as Theatrix is on his blue side as they split the map in half right now. Baja Blast Lover uh, is doing exactly what we talked about. Um, in champ select, and it's just sprinting straight at the Vigar. Oh uh, no! Just... Labyrinth getting super low. He doesn't have his flash from earlier. He uses the the berries to try to get some health back. The ignite comes down. Clap just soloing out the Maokai, and that's what happens when you go for that dangerous invade. Yep, dangerous invade, really low health, no vision. Somehow I didn't see how he was giving away his position. Uh, Adam taking the blue buff on the uh, other side, knowing that his was taken, and Clap just clapped him. I think that's probably something that has been said before. I'm not freak, I promise. <laughs> As Moose takes a huge chunk from the... Oh, crap. The double tap. Yeah, the double... Double... Wait, hold on. I was corrected by someone earlier. It's not double tap. I'm sure chat will correct us any moment. And we have an aggressive move going in from Baja Blast. He throws up the Event Horizon. He, the Morgana Black Shields the Jarvan after this stun comes down just to block some of that magic damage from him. Baja Blast having a little bit of a problem in some of those essential cues to start those games. Yeah, yeah. so it's double up double is up. what it's called. But I don't care. I'm going to tap it. But yeah, he's missing these. This is, this is something we talked about before is that skill shot reliancy. We saw this in the last series that uh, was being casted. When you have to rely most of your engager pick potential, or in this case, damage on pick reliancy. Oh good man, and Morgana snares the Mokai up snare. under the tower, taking some tower shots. That and tower exactly range the way they wanted that to go. That tower range was absolutely far. Look at that. <laughs> it's insane. Um. CS lead though, interestingly enough, in the bot lane while being pushed in their tower the entire like time. Have a gank possibly coming down here in the mid lane. Bot lane. And bot lane we have a fight happening. Oh, we've got an ult, a Shen ult coming down. Multiple ganks happening in multiple locations. Shen teleports down to save his buddy, and uh, they're all gonna back off of that. And now we got a teleport coming back because you do not want to leave a York up in your tower. And now we got the gank coming down in the mid lane. Jarvan ults down on the Hiramar, and they're gonna get the kill in the mid lane. Interesting choice. I mean, Adam, uh, Theatrix over here just staying super calm, knowing his team has got it under control on the bot lane, stays, waits while his uh, opponent is distracted, and dives in on him, gets the kill. Yeah, and, and this is... A go, Frank. Oh, I was just say, and notice what Hiramar did there, dropping that pool under, um, under the Jarvan ult. I think late game, with a full AP Morgana, that's going to hurt a lot. Yeah, it definitely will. Just it'll definitely depend on the itemization of whoever is inside. If it's the Malachi or the York, probably not as much. But if it's uh, if it's the uh, Raka, without some type of Aegis or something, it's going to be really nasty. As Adam is soloing out the uh, Rift Herald right now. It's like Labyrinth onto him though. 
Uh oh. And he's super low. We're gonna have a fight coming down. Labyrinth uh, gets the W in on him. T making, forcing him to tank the Rift Herald. And he gets the kill onto the Jarvan. Now he's gonna secure the Rift Herald. No! Shen coming down to block. Oh my goodness, they didn't get it. Was it the Morgana that picked up the Rift Herald? Yeah, she did, but they're just zoning it off now so that no one gets it. Nobody's gonna get this Rift Herald. They're saying nobody. Labyrinth does have that red buff, so he's going to be looking for some auto attack fights here. They're going to get that George stun. Uh, the baby cage coming down. Oh, man. They're just going to get the Shen now, finally. Nice job. But the Herald was picked up. Yeah, Shen did pick up the Herald as he taunted through. Okay. So so sacrificing himself to pick up that Rift Herald. And uh, guys, what do you think? Is that worth? Definitely. Uh, Absolutely. You want to be able to take down more structures. First tower gold is still available. Although, at this moment, if I was Labyrinth, I would have probably pushed with my three-man unit top lane. That, that's where I would have gone, because Sivir's just going to continue pushing, and now they also have the Herald on their side. So at any moment, one of your towers is going to go down. Just depends on where Shen is. Thankfully, it was Shen and not Jarvan that picked it up, because Shen's going to be relegated to top lane for like the next three minutes. And what was really awesome about that um, fight was that though they didn't get another objective, GDA didn't get another objective, uh, it forced uh, Bear Jr. to rotate, to start rotating towards that Rift Herald and let Euromoose get some decent damage on that bottom turret. And catch up a little bit in farm uh, that Euromoose was behind uh, on the random guy. Exactly. Oh, I'm still trying to. He's still getting this stutter that I was getting from last time. That's uh, that's tough. Fix any of these settings. If there's anything I could really do about that, we're gonna just gonna keep it rocking with the stream. Got a teleport yep. coming in. They're gonna summon that Rift Herald in top lane. They're gonna try to push this tower down, but um, or he's, oh man, so interesting choice here to use that Rift Herald in the top lane. I don't know if they're gonna get anything. I think the purpose was to try to make it happen as fast as you can. Also, whoop. flash Q again, another flash. So these two in the mid lane have just been trading flashes nonstop. Yeah. And again, we saw the Morgana flash Q instead of flash R. And if we had the flash R, I think they would have secured it. Yeah, I think it's just maybe not necessarily not being comfortable with the champion. Just a fight going down top lane, looks like more of a trade. The Yorick is just going to win this trade every single time. And we've been seeing that game after game in the PMA LCS here, that Yorick is just incredibly strong right now, not afraid to take any trades. And I mean, that's classic. Yeah. yeah. That karma damage on the Soraka. Yeah. And it looks like because of the prioritization on the bot side of the map, that top lane tower is going to get on four first blood. Flash coming in from Garfield. So we got multiple things happening at once. We got a dragon being taken by J4 in the bottom lane. We get a solo kill happening by Hillary Clinton. Flashing the mastery, the PM coming out. And it looks like we may have a tower dive coming now here, but it looks like instead of that, they're just going to go ahead and back off this. Possibly just go ahead and give it up. I'm not entirely sure why the Shen decided to flash there. Uh, I think he was trying to flash taunt. I'm not entirely sure either. Before the turret died? Yes. Uh, but this is the... This is the part of Poon's comp that we were talking about. Uh, that's going to be very hard to answer. As Hillary Clinton is still pushing here in the top lane. Adam has been on this bot side of the... He's going to get caught. Oh. Uh, fight happening. J4 going down, but also trading with the Vigar. And in top lane, they are going to try to take this top tower, but they're just, they, they can't do it. They can't do it. So we got more fights happening, trying to keep up with everything happening in the bot lane. Bear Jr. is going to get out with the Ignite on him. So we got multiple summoners being traded bot lane, uh, all in the effort to try to get something off of this massive push that was happening top. So all in all, it's a one for one trade with most likely the bot tower going to be going down with just a huge chunk damage going down the top lane. But team comp wise, I feel like that favors Pooh, mainly because this Yorick is not going to get stopped anytime soon. He has his Triforce now, if he didn't already. Um, uh, Adam also going the squishier of the two builds, building Black Cleaver and Warrior Enchantment on Jarvan. 
uh, typical to his playstyle as a carry potential for his team. But staying on that bot side, trying to either force a dive while Yorick was just split pushing top by himself, Labyrinth watching and seeing what was on the map, knowing that Jarvan was outside when they saw him on the ward, and just pressing the advantage. They finally get the tower bot lane, but I feel like overall it's a worthwhile trade for trade for Pooh. The only thing that's gonna that is concerning me though. We got for a big fight Pooh. happening here. Jarvan dives in on the Soraka using that damage that he's been building to try to get the delete on him. This general is gonna come down to get the assist. He dives in on Labyrinth. Labyrinth is trapped inside of the Cataclysm and he's gonna escape with the flash. They're gonna try to chase him down. Yeah, I think they definitely he's got the chase to this down. minion here. Yes, try to get the distance on him. But unfortunately, it looks like he is gonna get taunted out. He's gonna just try to escape, but there's nothing he could do. They're gonna take that kill down. And now there's four of them bot looking for a push, possibly going back. <laughs> yep. And, and uh, unfortunately, a light breeze is going to knock this top tower down, so he has to try to go back and save it, but... Might have been wiser for him to stay and try to get this push on that bot lane. There's really nothing he could do to stop that top tower. I will definitely agree with you on that. He still has TP. He could have TP'd back to this tower right here. Uh, but, I mean, it's neither here nor there right now just because they Wait. want... Jarvan being caught out by the event horizon. They're going to just delete him! And that's what you get for building damage. You wind up being really squishy, and the Vigar through the mid game, who's getting pretty strong, is just gonna delete you. Meanwhile, Morgana on the top lane. Hey, there you go. So she, she ulted first, forcing the flash, as opposed to getting. Oh, the she hit. does land the Q. They're gonna go in. The black shield comes out on the Morgana to stop herself from getting stunned by the wall, but she does not have any backup yet. She gets the Q again. York has ulted, he's gonna keep going in ham. Shen's gonna come in and try to get this up, but I mean, the York, he's just gonna escape, but Shen can't win the duel by himself. Yep, this is the part where we see Hillary Clinton. And he and York's gonna turn it around on him, in fact, and they're gonna try to throw the Q out, but he doesn't. York gets the wall, gets the kill. Morgana misses the Q, he's throwing it out. A black shield coming down from Morgana, but he gets the double kill. The double kill going down to the York. Three, zero, and one now. I think the biggest issue in that fight there was that the miscommunication uh, coming from Baja Blast Lover and Garfield Juice because Garfield Juice was still on the wave uh, not following up which could have happened so much sooner uh, on the York and then let the York have this uh, elongated fight to take the dump. Yeah, also you have to know when York's strong points are. If his maiden is down, you can try to fight him. He's not that he's great. Gonna teleport just from the but he's going to get it anyway. This York is just taking the town right now. Red team's has been destroyed. Yep, uh, Hillary Clinton showing them why the Electoral College should have voted for her, I guess. Labyrinth doesn't Labyrinth even care. He's like, I'm just going to get this tower. Red team's has been destroyed. Needed to shop the anyway. Thing, the kill does go over to your Moose, though. Oh, that's unfortunate. And we have an 18-minute inhibitor turret. Teleport coming down. in. We're gonna teleporting in, walking slowly up to the Soraka while taking a bunch of damage. Maybe not exactly what they wanted there. Never yeah. falter. So I think what we're seeing is uh, GDA trying to play a really aggressive game, uh, but they're making a couple of mistakes, and Pooh is really capitalizing on them. And, and maybe that's the shot com calling coming down from Bear Jr. Yeah, um, one could say that Poo is pooing on them right now. Um, essentially, we talked about this. The proactive use of Shen ultimates is what needed to happen. We saw that when they killed Labyrinth and the Soraka. It was a proactive use, but because of how big Hillary Clinton is right now, he's just able to continually press down these towers. He already He's taken three towers in 18 minutes on his side of the map alone. Um, with Dragon coming up and it being an Infernal, I believe... No, another Ocean Drake. Um, it's going to be interesting to see. We've got a gank coming down in top. Soraka face checks the enemy jungle. They're going to use everything they got. And Soraka is, in fact, going to escape. Oh, no, he's not! Karma flashes forward with the Q. Morgana attempts this Q onto Misfortune, but misses. Uh, lots of spells coming out for both sides, but they do secure the kill onto Bear Jr. Yep, Bear playing his aggressive style. Only in the... Looks like Shen's gonna face check this bush, and York is waiting for him. Hillary Clinton is just not afraid to take this duel, but he realizes he has to back off. The Axis is coming with the red buff. They knock up the York. They ult down on the York, and here is nothing he can do. Two versus one. He's going to escape, but Hiramar comes in with a big stun, deletes the Jarvan, and gets the double kill onto Garfield Juice. Incredible. That was the exact type of play that you want to see. 
from GDA. The only problem is Viegar lands a perfect two-man event horizon and just deletes the squishy full AD Jarvan for where now they're going to give up this Drake right here, which is really going to help us. Here, Mar's just whacking away. I think away they're going to the give up the inhib too. No, they're Mar's not. Mar's just gonna... whacking away on it. Uh, he's not going to stay for it, though. He just popped his event horizon. We've got two men coming up uh, to stop. If he yep, doesn't yeah, leave, they're back off. Yeah, and we got a dragon being going on, on to the side of. Uh, Bear Jr. poops in the woods. They are doing a great job right now capitalizing on this map right now uh, as they just begin to choke out GDA. Yeah, if you want to toggle the vision, actually, hey, there's only one ward on the side of uh, GDA while there's multiple wards inside the enemy jungle on the top side where the York is split pushing. Uh, Something that I just think is, is so crucial for when you have a strong split pusher, your team needs to provide him with good deep vision on his side of where he's split pushing so he isn't caught out, which is why they were able to uh, counteract that roam from Jarvan up there to where it ended up as a two for one as opposed to for a one for nothing. I think that we need to see here, though. Um... Larry Clinton possibly getting a little greedy here overextending, but he's got his Soraka coming into the back line. Are they going to switch targets onto Bear Jr.? Bear Jr. is getting poked out by the Karma, who gets the W onto him. They're trying to get the back line. Soraka is possibly caught out. He uses the Redemption to get the heal. And they're throwing out all kinds of summoner spells. Labyrinth comes in with the Maokai ultimate, snaring up two members from GDA. The event... The, oh my gosh, there's so much happening. I'm stuttering over myself. They're getting more kills. Jarvan uses his... Flag and drag to escape. That's a kill. That's a double kill onto GDA. Morgana's down. Karma's down. They're looking to chase this one out. Hillary Clinton going in. Jarvan using the flag and drag once again. But Hiramar flashes over the wall. Gets the kill onto him. They're flashing mastery. He's using the BM. And we got a big push happening bot lane. Teleport coming in from Hillary Clinton. See, at this or point, Hiramar, I do not... pardon me. Yeah, I would, I would much rather them... They could have one person right now, Hillary Clinton, go do this while they go do Baron. They're prioritizing getting more structures down. This is the time where you do Baron. You just flash to kill the jungler. Overall, though, really, really good uh, counter engage back when it looked like Hillary Clinton was caught out. Uh, Bear Jr. buying a lot of time with the silence and the redemptions uh, and some great uh, event horizons coming out of Hiramar, who was focused in the draft when he got his Anivia banned. I think what needs to happen here on the side of who is that they need to close this game out soon, uh, sooner rather than later. I think they're on track to do that right now, um, but we do have a significant farm lead uh, coming from the Jarvan. We do have a 20 farm lead uh, coming the Morgana, and it's I th I th uh, Siver was up in kills um, and close in farm, but I think uh, that. That gold matchup is now in favor of Misfortune. Yeah, when we're looking at the gold right now, the gold lead altogether is around a 5,000 gold lead. And the gold is primarily on their solo laners. Uh, it's a 2,000 gold lead for Viegar, and then a 2,000 gold lead in the top lane as well. Uh, and uh, around a 700 gold lead for the ADCs. Um, I actually I slightly disagree. I feel like the later this game goes, the even better that someone like Hiramar and Hillary Clinton feel. Um, obviously, oh, Bear Jr. is getting possibly caught out here, but they do not want to take it. He uses a redemption just <clears> to get himself back up, and they're going to escape that fight there. But they are posturing around this Baron, it looks like. Yeah, so here's the problem they run into right now, is that it's the top lane inhibitor that's down, so you don't force Shen to be so far away to where he has to burn teleport or stand united. Also, they could have had this Baron for free. Uh, there was a time to where but theatrics was down. There was no smite challenge that was available. But it did, I did, they did opt to instead to go for the tower and the inhibitor, the bot tower and that inhibitor, which you could argue sets them up for a Baron coming up in a moment. Looks like they're, in fact, uh, starting it right now. So we have uh, Pooh starting the Baron. The Soraka heal is keeping that Maokai healthy so we can tank everything out. He did get a chance to go back and shot, finally getting that dead man's plate. And uh, it looks like GDA either does not know about, do they know? 
GDA no, has no idea that his bearing is being taken, but they have to have an idea. Jarvin's gonna check it out. Is he gonna get the ward over? He doesn't have a ward. He thinks it might possibly be taken. He's gonna nothing. The Baron's gonna go over to Pooh at 25 minutes and 18 seconds. Maokai uses the ult to disengage. Sivir spell shields it, but they're just gonna try to retreat with this. The event horizon coming down to cover it, and they're out of here with that Baron. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton split pushing up the bottom. Yeah, I just. I mean, good Baron sneak by them, but like one day I I don't I didn't see any vision. Bear Junior no getting a little aggressive here. Flag and drive coming out to try to get in on that Bear Junior, who's pretty squishy, but he flashes out just to be safe. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't see a pink ward in the pit, but then there also wasn't any wards on the side of GDA, so you kind of had to assume what was going on. There wasn't much uh, vision really invested on either side for that play, but uh, good Baron sneak by. Bear Junior poops in the woods. So as I was saying before, the you just kind of want to if you want to end it early, just so that you can show command of that you know how to end games when you have a six k gold lead like this or a five and a half gold lead. But the longer this goes outside of a six item late game Sivir who's about to get bopped. You have the Sivir who's about to get just completely destroyed by Hiramar. The Event Horizon does catch but can't spell shield it in time and that's a big mistake here for them. They're going to lose a lot from this. Labyrinth just happy to tank up these tower shots. One right after the other down to less than half health but they're going to keep going very quickly with that big split push. They've got the Baron buff here to help them out. Vagar is a little bit low but they do have a Soraka. They've got the redemption. They're going to stay a little bit healthy here. They're going to take this middle inhibitor now finally and and it looks like they are going to be swinging around towards the bot lane to bring up this push on the bot tower, which is the only tower uh, inhibitor tower they have left standing. Yeah, I think you try to use as much of the Baron buff you have left. If you don't feel like there's enough left, you just kind of retreat to this and then uh, get in a recall pattern after the Infernal Drake, which is really going to help you, especially for your Vagar and your Misfortune as well. Yeah, I think that Infernal Drink is, is going to be huge for them uh, in this moment. They, it's just a more damage option for them. They're going to go in with the Baron buff, just a little bit more buffed up damage just so they can close this out. But we'll see if they're able to do it. There's one final stand coming out here on this bot tower. Yep, Hiramar's posturing incredibly far forward, but when you have this kind of thing, Labyrinth using the ultimate to... Just to try to zone them out, and just to get the tower, but we'll see. Perhaps we might damage engage from, from GDA. Yeah, the Morgana damage is massive. And even through that, no follow-up on that meant that Hiramar could live. He does have Zonias, uh, but Raka heals could have probably also bought him enough time as well. So we do have That's... about half health on random guy here. And they're going to try to take this inhibitor, uh, but they don't have Hillary Clinton with them. So we're going to see, we might see uh, a collapse here from GDA trying to defend this last inhibitor grouping up on it, but I don't think they want to take the fight unless uh, they can catch somebody out of position. I think now is the time to use the Sivir ult. You have to do it right now. You'll see Viegar right there. You should have done it a little bit sooner. That was the time to do it. You had a 4v3. I you agree. knew the Maokai ultimate was down. That was your chance to try to, you know, ease the bleeding that is this 7,000 gold lead. They're going to use what's left of this Baron buff. They've got just a couple of seconds left of this Baron buff to try to get a couple more hits on the inhibitor, but they don't want to get out of position for it. Vigar gets hit by the Q, but Mir oh, Miramar just absolutely deletes the Morgana. they got a fight happening down. Hillary Clinton's fighting two of them in the top. He doesn't even care about them. He's just going for the inhibitor. The Redemption tries to come down, but it's not too late. Hiramar, Hillary Clinton does fall, so we've got one down on both sides here, but unfortunately we're missing all inhibitors on all sides. They're going to take these two towers, and it looks like Bear Jr. Poops in the Woods is going to take... For it. Channeling the Sivir ultimate onto Garfield, or the, excuse me, the Misfortune ultimate. They're going to try to go down onto Hiramar, who uses Zonias to escape the W from the Karma. He flashes away using the Event Horizon just to absolutely stun up the Sivir, try to kill her. But once again, Bear Jr. poops in the woods is going to take game one here of this uh, best of two series. What do you guys think? That was a pretty decisive, well, it was back and forth in the beginning, but they, it seems like Bear Jr. Uh, poops in the woods capitalize on a lot of the mistakes that GDA were making and, and use that to get a victory here. Uh, I think it was back and forth early. What ended up happening, I think, is that when we saw uh, the Yorick get the solo kill on the first tower when the engage happened bot lane and the Shenult had to come down for uh, bot lane, 
when that whole sequence happened, he had the TP back top, and then they used the Rift Herald. That whole sequence right there was kind of when it felt like GDA was kind of on the back foot. They weren't able to make proactive plays. And then we saw the um, indecisiveness of theatrics on the bot lane dive to happen. He could have just forced them off tower with having um, Baja Blast hide in Fog of War. They could have got first tower when first tower went down and then they did nothing afterwards and they got that huge chunk on top. Hillary Clinton was just too much for them to deal with. I also question Adam's uh, all damage build right there because he was going to go in and get bopped by everybody, uh, regardless of who it was. As I said at, at the beginning of... Wow, that was on my chin. Um, as I said at the beginning of this game, I think that if they miss skill shots, that they are going to... That the recovery is really difficult for GDA. Um, and I think that they had a lot of great positioning. Like, they had a lot of good attempts to get picks. But for me, uh, a big hole gap was with this Morgana. She was getting bopped so quick that she wasn't able to use her alt. She'd be using her Zonia, but she would never be able to get an alt Zonia off. Um, I think a little bit because of positioning and a little bit because of um, just getting uh, popped too quick. Um, her flash cues, uh, a lot of missed, a lot of missed snares. Um, there were a couple great snares, but there were also a lot of missed snares at key times. Um, just, and then small mistakes with the miscommunication top lane uh, to give Hillary Clinton the double kill um, is just, uh, I think, a lot of very minute mistakes. And great job on Pooh for just absolutely taking advantage of those mistakes and running with them, not giving an inch. Yeah, I, I would have to say there was some micro mistakes that you're talking about that I will agree with. Um but in the early game, it was, you know, the first blood went maybe off to the wrong person. Uh, but they had they had pressure, and the Morgana probably could have, like, R fl flashed or R then queued, whatever. I just think after the bottom lane gank, I really would have loved to have seen uh, Theatrix prioritize keeping this Yorick down. Um, as, as, you know, we've all said, Yorick is the PMA LCS top lane stud right now for all teams, it seems like. Joy? Sorry, we're I'm just trying to focus on getting this new uh, this new lobby created. So you guys you guys take oh, no, over yeah. this uh, this <clears throat> mid game uh, session here as we get back into lobby and uh, begin our next uh, round of picks and bans. Yeah, and uh, then just uh, MVP vote is out, guys. Everyone go vote for it. Um, in your opinion, Frank, wh who do you think uh, is your MVP and why? I think I'd have to say the MVP pick uh, for me is going to go to Hillary Clinton. Um, not only was the split push incredibly effective uh, and not, not being answered, um, I think that just the mechanics of the Yorick uh, he just knows them so well uh, when to engage, when to disengage, when to go back in. Uh, it really just was a complete bully um, because I think that the jungle was behind. I think that early the uh, the Vigar was behind and the bot lane lost in that early gank. They were ahead in farm. They lost on that early gank. And I think that that, it, the, that Hillary Clinton on the Yorick just completely changed the trajectory. Yeah, I de it was definitely part of the win conditions and why I thought that, and that, that was the main, one of the main reasons why I picked them it, for my pregame pick. Um, my main thing is that I'm also going to be giving it to um, Hillary Clinton. My honorable mention, though, is Hiramar had some amazingly clutch event horizons, horizons. and just amazing, uh, amazing control of zone control, which is what we talked about in the beginning uh, of the game. Well, I also want to give an honorable mention out to Bear Jr. 
on the Soraka um, using the uh, Redemptions so well uh, to keep healthy. Um, also had a lot of great silences. Um, silence on the J4 near the Baron. Um, silence on the Morgana for the TP uh, to root her down um, to stop the TP play. Uh, just we were questioning the Soraka pick and um, not playing a champion that makes plays. Uh, but I think that uh, great job. Yeah, I mean, we did see a couple of times where he was caught out of position and being the squishy Soraka that he was, but he did for uh, a good amount of time, um, you know, have a good command and control over that and buy enough time in some of these extended team fights. But it shows a lot about the identity of Pooh right now. You can ban out Nick or you can ban out Bear Jr. and it won't affect their shot calling. Uh, it won't affect where they play from or that they can play from multiple lanes. Uh, Labyrinth having some amazing uh, prioritization across the map in terms of macro play. They lost first uh, Blood, they lost first Dragon, they lost a Rift Herald. He's not bothered by it. He just, he does Maokai things. He's the tankier of the two. Uh, and just shows maybe why he is the one who taught Adam how to play. We'll have to find out and see if it's an even split between the Senpai and the Grasshopper. That trash. So good. Love okay, it. Um, go ahead and uh, invite Frank into this lobby, and uh, we'll be good to start picks and bans. Good. I'm going to go grab a glass of water or something downstairs. So. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and pause the stream for a moment, guys, so we can get the VOD uh, saved on here. But we will be back in just a few moments. Once again, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. This is week two, now going into game two of GDA versus Pooh. Pooh having taken the victory in game one. So thank you guys so much. We'll be back in just a few minutes. <laughs> 